Hey there, uh, welcome to the first of hopefully many Pixel Luffy tutorials. Uh, this week, we're gonna start learning how to create a realistic gloss shader using V-Ray for Maya. Uh, we're gonna start by creating this simple shader. Uh, once we have this done, we're gonna move ahead and create a more of a velvet satin look uh, of a shader with a bit of you know specular and some, some reflection. Uh, once we have that done, I'm gonna move ahead and create uh, a shader on top of it as if we're printing uh, with a, with another material, a pattern on top of the of the velvet uh, with uh, with another type of shader like a gold or silver or what have you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the technique of how to create, uh, usually how to create gloss shaders uh, in, in, in Maya. Uh, we usually start with the material. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the, uh, with the V-Ray material. Uh, you can start with the Lambert if you want. All right, to get that softness look of a, of a cloth, uh, and if you can, we can look at some photos, and I have a photo here to see some reference. You can see that we have that white on the edge, and then we have the the shader in the middle of so the color. You know, so we have like that beige in the middle, and then it just fades out into the white. So to get that, uh, we we need uh, a two D ramp. So I'm gonna go into two D textures and create a ramp. I'm gonna go ahead and link this ramp into the self illumination. All right. I'm gonna get this. Uh, I only need two colors for this. So I'm not gonna need these three. So for the top one, I need the black, and for the bottom, I need white. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the place to the texture. And on the utilities, I'm gonna look for sampler info. I'm gonna middle click and drag this on top of the ramp. And I'm gonna link facing ratio to both U and V. Uh, you can link it to either U and V. Uh, I usually do this just in case you have the type of the ramp uh, different, like a, and, and it's gonna give you the same results, so nothing changes here. All right, and this is what you get. You're gonna get you're gonna get that white on the edges and then that gray in the middle. All right, and you can you can play around with this, uh, and you can get like the intensity or when you want that, uh, you know, to the edge to finish. Uh, you can even play around with the interpolation. I think the best one is exponential down. It just gives you that nice fade from that black to white. Uh, and so the ramp here is acting more of like a mask. So only on the edges, it's doing the self illumination. And when it heads to the middle, uh, that self illumination just goes away just because of the, of the black color. Uh, you can even tweak how strong you want that white to be. Uh, we're not gonna leave it to white, so I'm gonna go with something like a, a gray. All right, before I add this to the shader, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give this a color. I'm gonna go with the purple. Something more desaturated. All right, so I'm gonna, gonna add this to the, to the mesh. I'm gonna hit render and see what that gives us. Uh, I'll pause the video and get back once, uh, once the render is done. All right, see you in a bit. All right, so here's what we get from that initial setup. Uh, I know this is an exaggerated example, uh, just so you can see the what I, what I meant by the softness of white on the edges, and then we have the shader uh, facing us. So this is the the facing ratio that I was I was telling you about. All right, so we can go ahead and tweak this to a more realistic uh, values, and uh, let's do this now. We're gonna go into the ramp, and I'm gonna tweak this, tone this down. Uh, and maybe uh, for the diffuse color, just less saturated, a bit darker maybe. And I'm gonna render just a just a region. All right, so you can see it here. We have that uh, lighter color at the edges, and then we have uh, that color facing us, and it gives that softness, uh, soft look to the to the to the cloth. So this is actually the initial uh, step that you make uh, that you take to to create a cloth shader and uh, after that you just add a bump or maybe a, a diffuse a diffuse color uh, what I hate about this technique is actually two things uh, the first is when you take this ramp and you link it into the self illumination what happens is even if you don't have any light in the scene uh, that shader is gonna glow as if because it's 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 linked into the self illumination right uh, the other thing I don't like about this is actually all cloth shade cloth materials uh, they don't have they don't fade to white. But in the example that I showed you, yeah, if you have a beige color, cream, or you know, uh, light color, it might fade to white. But 
uh, in this example, for example, for the, in the a more satin look, you'll have you have a nice gradient of colors. Actually, you have from a dark purple it goes to a purple to a pink, and maybe at some point it reaches that white. So it's not just from black uh, to dark gray to light gray or white. So I'm going to show you the technique that I usually use, and we're going to see the difference. Uh, so instead of hooking this uh, ramp into into the self illumination, I went ahead and created a new ramp. Again, the same thing I linked to the facing ratio, uh, and I will have like an exponential down, and we have a dark uh, purple on the top. It's almost the same purple here, and a lighter purple on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and link this into into the material. But actually, I'm going to link it into the diffuse. So middle click, drag it into the diffuse. And I'm going to right click on the self illumination and break connection. Make sure you don't have any self illumination. Just take that back to black. All right. I'm going to go ahead and render this so we can see the difference. I'm going to save this for comparison. And I'm going to render this so you can see uh, the difference between the two. And I'll get back to you in a sec. So as you can see, just by adding that ramp into the diffuse uh, rather than the self-illumination, uh, we, we get a more softer look, uh, a more realistic look. And so this is what we had before. It does have that soft look, but it doesn't, it doesn't look good. Uh, I mean, you can go ahead and tweak it, uh, but you're not going to get that uh, nice gradient from that uh, pink to that uh, deep purple. So... Now you can go ahead and just add a, a bump map to this and you can, for example, for a, a more cartoony look, uh, you might get away just with the bump. And so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, for the uh, cloth texture, I'm going to use uh, a texture that I downloaded from cgtexture.com. So you can get it here. I'm going to use this blue one. Uh, and to create a bump, I'm just going to open that texture into Photoshop. And we'll just do uh, a simple desaturate and some levels just to get some uh, some nice uh, some nice colors to work with. All right, so I'm gonna go into image adjustments, desaturate, and I just want the inner part to be a bit darker. So I'll just go ahead, something like this. You can you can go ahead and tweak it as you wish. All right, so now uh, back into Maya, I'm gonna go ahead and under scroll down to bump map, uh, click on the small checker to open up and select file. Uh, make sure you don't have any. A filter type selected because this what it does it just adds some softening to the uh, to the JPEG uh, and we don't want that to the texture so I'm just gonna put the filter type to off and I'm gonna go ahead and select the uh, which one was it I think this one all right and we'll go ahead and repeat the UV uh, there isn't like a perfect I think 15 works. I test this out. All right. And this, the bump should be really subtle. So I think uh, around 0.5. You can go ahead and test it, but I, uh, I know 0.5 worked perfect for me. And I'm going to do just a small section. I think it's way too subtle. I think a 0.1 might do the job. All right. I'm going to. Just decrease the repeat U and V. So I think around 10. I will do a test render again. Again, it's it's the, depending on the look that you're going for uh, for the, for the cloth. I mean, you you have cloth with you know the the pattern is more visible you have cloth like satin the pattern is barely visible because the the threads are really small uh, so i think even five might might do the work and now i'm gonna need to tweak the bump just a tiny bit so i think point zero five 
because we want just a subtle hint of of a bump on that uh, on that texture. All right. So this will give you uh, give you a nice result, uh, especially if you're going for a more cartoony look. Uh, but if we, we want to add more to this, we can go ahead and add a color. So we're going to use uh, the same photo that I for the fabric plane that I downloaded the texture, and we're going to hook that up into the diffuse. So I'm going to go ahead and put the under the diffuse. But we're going to run into a problem because we have the gradient already put into that diffuse. So how do we how do we go ahead and put a diffuse? Uh, we already have a ramp. So there are actually a couple of ways to do this. And I'm going to go uh, in two of them that I uh, usually use. Uh, we can go ahead and in the main shader, because the dark purple is actually the color that we is facing us always because of that facing ratio. So we can go ahead and hook that texture into the darker uh, color. So under selected color, so make sure you have the darker one selected. Uh, click on the small checker, uh, go to file. Again, uh, make sure filter type is off. And I'm going to go ahead and select fabric plane. All right, one trick you can use to make sure uh, the texture has the same repeating pattern so you don't have two of them and, and each time you're going to change the UV type, you have to go into two and make sure both of them are five. And trust me, when you have a lot of shaders, you might get lost and not know which, which shader has how many repeated UV. So the best way to do is just to lead the place to the texture and use the same one that we used for the uh, just middle kick and drag it and drop it and just click default and this way we know both of them have a repeated UV of 5 right so now if we look into the here you're gonna look you're gonna see that we have that shader in the middle but it's going to that purple and we don't want that because this is a blue texture so we want that to go more into a light cyan so I'm gonna select the ramp and on the lighter color I'm just gonna select a more desaturated lighter blue something like this might work so I'm going to go ahead and do a test render now, and we'll be back with you in a sec. All right, as you can see, we already have a decent cloth shader. Uh, the material looks soft. We have a nice texture. Uh, we have a nice bump to it. So you can go ahead and call this, uh, you know, a good a good shader, and you can use it uh, for production. But I think we can go ahead and make this shader a bit better. Uh, just you know, to uh, easier to adjust uh, and to get uh, more out of it. All right, so let's head up into Hypershade and let's go over the shader again. All right, so what we did here is we created a simple video material. Uh, we hooked uh, a ramp into the diffuse, right? Uh, the ramp had two colors, a uh, dark color and a lighter color. Instead of the dark color uh, to have, in the dark color we hooked up the diffuse uh, and in the white color we kept a light shade of the same uh, color of the of the texture right and we used the same uh, we used the texture and took it into Photoshop uh, desaturated it and just added some levels and we created the uh, the, the, the uh, bump map right but let's say you want to go ahead and change the color of the uh, of the texture so to do that you'll have to open up the shader in uh, in Photoshop and go into hue and saturation, uh, you know, let's say, and you, you try to, to choose the color that you, that will fit uh, your project, and then you're going to get back to Maya, and trust me, it's going to be a lot of back and forth to get that exact color uh, to fit with your scene and with your lighting setup, right? But there are a couple of ways which, are, which makes this really easy, and I'm going to go with over two ways that I usually use. Uh, the first one, which is uh, using the same uh, shader setup, is to use an HSV ramp, remap, sorry. So an H remap HSV. Uh, so what it does is we're going to go ahead and hook the diffuse color, the actual fabric plane, into the color. So just middle click and drop it here. And then... We're going to take this and put it, select the top color, and put it instead of the diffuse. So that's it. So we, we actually created a bridge between the two. So we're still using that. All right. 
But here's the here's the great part. When you double click on the remap HSV, you have a hue, a saturation, and a value. And it's pretty straightforward what it does. The hue, we're gonna change the color. You can see the preview here. So you can get a more purple, a red, all right? Uh, the saturation makes the color a bit less saturated. And we have the value if you wanna make the uh, texture a bit darker. All right, this works really good. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a test render. Let's go ahead and I don't know, change this to a more purple. And don't forget we have to change the lighter uh, version as well. And to try to fit it as close as possible. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna render just a tiny bit, all right? And you can see immediately we have uh, changed the color really easy without going back and forth into Photoshop. Although this technique works really good, uh, we do have a lot of guesswork because uh, you'll have to go in and try to fiddle with this and find the exact nuance and color that will fit uh, to your uh, to your project, right? But there is actually another way to do this, and we're actually going to go ahead and create like a new shader. Uh, we're going to use the same technique, but just we're going to make the shader a bit more uh, have more control on changing the color. Uh, really, really, uh, really easy. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with a new V-Ray material. I'm going to name this Cloth Shader 2. All right. And we're going to use a ramp. I'm going to start with a ramp. And for the ramp, I'm going to use just one color. All right. I'm going to go ahead and create a layered texture. So a layered texture, just as, as the name implies, is just a layered texture. We can add multiple 2D textures or 3D textures. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and middle click and drag this on top. Uh, the layer which is uh, on the farthest left here, this is, it's going to be the layer on the top, right? So if you move the green, it's going to turn to green. And if you move this one, it's going to show the ramp, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and on the green one, I'm going to link a texture, which is going to be the same fabric texture, but with a bit, all right? So just the test gloss, just the same cloth shader material, uh, but without the levels. So we just desaturated it, all right? So here's what we do now. We go ahead and middle click and drag this on top. So now we can see the actual texture. And from the blend mode, we can go ahead and create multiply. All right, so now it's really easy to change the color. So I'll just go ahead and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make the material something light, uh, maybe something like this, all right? Once you're happy. And here you have the control to select the exact color that you need. So you don't have the, you know, hue and saturation, you know, from Photoshop. You don't have the hue and saturation hue uh, from the RSV, uh, which, which is uh, both techniques are good, but it's just a matter of having more control and just easier to change uh, without too much hassle or too much back and forth. All right, done. So we're going to go ahead and link this into the diffuse color all right now to add that softness you know from the facing ratio and we're not going to use this type of ramp what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what is called a, a blend material which is actually something similar to the layer texture but we actually can put uh, a lot of materials a lot of shaders not only uh, a lot of materials not only the textures so we can middle click and drop this into the base material and I'm going to go ahead and drop a new material on top of this. 
right? Which is just a simple PVA material. And I'm gonna give this a lighter color from that one that we just used, that beige. And as you can see, these materials, the coat materials, have something which is called a blend amount. So if you take this to uh, to black, uh, we don't. This material has no effect. If you take this to white, uh, then you, we don't see the base material. We only see the coat material. But we can actually map a map inside here and control that blend amount. And yes, we're going to use the same facing ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, duplicate this and duplicate this so I can reuse them. All right. So again. I don't need any colors here, so I'm just using this as a mask, right? So again, drop this on other, facing ratio, UV cord, and into the V-Ray blend, I'm gonna name this, let's name this cloth blend, right? I'm gonna drop this into the blend amount, right? And now, if we go ahead and look at this, we're gonna see that same effect, right? So we have the shader in the middle, and which fades out into that uh, into that gray, into that sorry uh, lighter color, All right? So now the only thing we have to add is actually the bump color, uh, the the bump map, right? So, but instead of adding, if we go ahead and add the bump map to the cloth shader, right? What it have what is going to happen is we're going to get the bump only on that base material. So then. What we're going to see is we're going to see a bump happening only on the base material and when it fades out to the other material the other material will look smooth which is doesn't make any sense because we're actually we're trying to to give that same feeling of uh you know softness but it's the same material it must have that that bump to it so to do that we can actually hook the blend the cloth blend into a bump which is called the v-ray bump and we just Middle click and drop this into the base material, right? And under the map here, we'll use the same, I'm just gonna go ahead and edit duplicate shading network. So we use the same, All right? So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this into the map. Again, we're gonna use the same one that worked 50 and again to make sure we're getting the same uh, repeat UV I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because it's actually the same and middle click and drag on top of it and just default so we, this way we're sure uh, that both textures have the same repeat UV right so now we're going to go ahead and select the mesh and apply the V-Ray bump shader to it right so let's go ahead and do a test render and Catch you in a bit. See ya. All right. So here's what we get uh, with the new shader. And you might say, well, the, the old one looked a bit better. I mean, it had a softer feel to it. Yes, I agree. But you have to remember that when we created the new ramp, and I'm going to just graph this one. When we created the ramp uh, with the light color, we actually chose full white. So you, we have to tweak this and select the white and take it a bit down, maybe something like this. And if we go ahead and render this region, I'm going to render this. We can actually control how soft or how strong do we want that softness to look, right? So we have that control as well. All right, so now that for the best part is that I can go ahead and in the ramp and I can select any color and I can make this green. with a brighter green maybe and just like that you change the color of of that uh, of that shader without going back into Photoshop without using the hue and saturation without you know fiddling with too much too many settings and just get doing a lot of guesswork right all right so you one thing you, you'll notice that this fades into that lighter uh, beige it's because as you remember the video material that we put into the blend which is gonna let's call this the 
soft feel, all right? Has that beige look to it, right? Okay. Actually, we can do a clever trick uh, to control this with only by changing this ramp. So let's go ahead and create a new uh, remap HSV, all right? And let's hook the ramp into the color again. And then this HSV, I'm gonna put it into the diffuse color. So now it's gonna give me the same uh, color. And we don't want that. I just want a lighter value of this. Like really, and less saturated. Okay. So now if I go ahead and test this, I'm gonna render so we have two of them. We're gonna get a green here which fades into a darker green, right? So we have that level of control just by changing. So now I just have to change one color. So if I wanna make this a dark red, I just have to change this. And I'm gonna go and render this part. And immediately we're gonna get that beautiful softness with only changing one color. Okay, we can go ahead and add more to this. Uh, the only thing that I'm trying to show you here uh, is that don't be afraid to create like really complex shader because if you, you know, break it down, because now if you look at it, it's all right, we have a lot of stuff, but if you break it down, it's really actually really simple and you have everything just makes sense and it's there to make your life easier and to make the shader easier. And especially if you send this down to a pipeline or this to a client, he, you're going to make his life so much easier by, you know, just tell them, okay, you tweak that color and it's going to change the shader and you can render it. So it's, it's really, really fun and nice to, to work with. So now how, how about, we make the softness here. So if you look at the softness now, it just has, you know, a straight feel. You don't have a lot of, you know, different colors into it, right? So you just, it's like, it looks like one color because it's actually just one color, right? We can actually break that down a bit by going into the facing ratio ramp, this one, and actually hooking up into the, by selecting the lighter version, hooking up the bump shader, right? and putting that into the facing ratio. And now if we render, I'm gonna do this render. We actually get just a more interesting uh, pattern rather than that softness that has almost no texture to it. Well, the, the, the only texture you can see now is actually coming from the bump because it's affecting both materials. But when we add, and you can you can actually see it here, you see how soft this is. And just by adding that facing ratio, it adds uh, that much more to it, right? But now we, we're gonna face into the same problem because this, this is way too light and uh, we can't control, now we, can, we can't control the how gray uh, we want this to be, right? Well, we're gonna create our old friend remap HSV again. And gonna drag this here. Again, we're gonna go take the bump shader, put it into the color. And we're gonna take the HSV and link it instead of that. Again, so we just created the bridge between them. So now if I zoom in into this, all right and I select the facing ratio. If I tone the value down, look what's gonna happen. So you're gonna get less white, which means less softness. So you're not gonna get that strong white or you can see here the difference between the two. So I think something around 0.4 would be, would be good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, full render and just get back in a sec. So here is our simple cloth uh, material. Uh, we're almost done with this one. I'm just gonna go over the shader just again so we can uh, make sure we have everything uh, clear. All right, so if you look at this, uh, it might seem a bit too complex, but as you've seen, it's it's really, really simple and everything just uh, falls in place and makes, you know, uh, has a certain uh, use. And 
I know it's, it might take more work to create a shader like this, but just to have the ability to change the entire color of the shader and the softness uh, with just one, uh, you know, one input, it just makes uh, makes the, the work that much fun and that much easier to do, right? So, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and select another color and just to do a couple of tests with a couple of colors. So we'll do a render here. While that's rendering, uh, let's select another one. Uh, we'll do maybe something a bit more vibrant. Something like this. And you see how, how beautiful it looks. It just gives, has that, the softness has the same color. Uh, we, we have that value, we have that texture, we have that, you know, shader into the into the softness as well, right? So now let's go ahead and create uh, that velvet look. So for that, I'm going to go with uh, maybe a deep, uh, something like a purple, you know, or a red, yeah, a purple. All right, something like this. And we're going to select the color shader which is the base of our right and we're gonna give it a reflection color and the glossiness of 0.7 I'm not gonna go into detail into a lot of shaders because this tutorial is only about uh, the cloth all right and use for now and I'm leave the for now to default of 1.6 right and now the other thing I'm gonna do is for the bump because a velvet, I mean, on this shader, you'll see that the pattern is uh, really obvious and you can see it. I mean, this you might see on, on the couch or, you know, like uh, thick draperies or like, a, uh, you know, the uh, chair, office chair or something like that. But let's let's say for a material like satin, the, the threads are so small, you barely can see the pattern, but you do want that texture to be uh, in the shader just to give it that more rich look. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a repeat of 15 by 15. And as you can see, I just have to repeat this one. I don't have to go in and, you know, make sure this is uh, repeating as well, you know. Uh, I mean, the bump and the file. I just have two two textures, which give me the color, give me the bump, give me the, the texture for the softness and so on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and all right, I think that's about it. All right, so let's go and just render one small part. Just to make sure we're getting uh, that look. And I think we might have a bit of too much reflection. All right, so we can, uh, we can tweak, it's a bit too reflective. Uh, so we can go in and now tweak the reflectivity a bit, reflection color. But instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, again, I'm gonna use the same uh, technique that we used for the uh, for the bump. And the bump shader, I'm gonna create a new remap, HSV. And I'm gonna link the bump shader into the color attribute. And into the shader, I'm gonna drop that into the reflection color. Right? And if you look, it's very subtle, so I'm going to just delete this connection and put this to white. And you can see this is the reflection, that the, the glossiness that we get. But if we link this into the reflection color, we get that nice subtle because we're getting only those green, uh, gray parts, the higher one. Uh, will These ones will going to be reflective, but this might be too reflective. So to control that, uh, again, we have that value. So I'm going to put the value something around... No, 0.3, 50, something like that. And I'm gonna do a render again. All right. All right. One more tweak we gotta do is I have to make the bump just a bit more subtle. We got to go into the V-Ray bump material. And I think something around 220 would be enough for this. And I'm going to go ahead and 
render this one and then uh, we'll do our final shader. And here is our velvet material. You can see we have a nice reflection from the lights. Uh, we have a nice softness. Uh, we have a rich color going from a dark purple going to, uh, you know, a more, you know, reddish pink and have a light pink. So we do have a lot of textures. The only the only thing I forgot to mention is I went ahead in the place to the texture and I also did a rotate UV. So this is this gives us this uh, patterns. So so we have a bit of uh, we can change the pattern a bit so it doesn't look exactly as the one uh, that we had before just that square look right so you can just playing around with and you can see the effect here just playing around with this will give you different all the time I'm gonna give you different uh, looks for your uh, bump or your pattern so play around with this and uh, you're gonna get some nice uh, some nice results all right so now we get we got to our final uh, shader and we're gonna go ahead and get ahead and create the uh, royal velvet. Uh, so we're gonna do first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the color of this one to a more uh, you know royal blue. All right. So to do that, I already have this color here. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our ramp and select the blue color. You can see it just changes everywhere. And then. Uh, what we need to do is we need to add on top of it we need to add that uh, gold leaf so under cloth blend we're just going to add another coat material and i already have a gold uh, shader ready i'm not going to go into to that shader uh, in this tutorial so i'm going to go with select the gold blend and drag and drop here right so now you're going to see it just blends the amount of of 50% uh, gray. We have can black, white. So we, we need to hook up um, a texture here. I already have a ready pattern that I created in, in Photoshop. It's just a simple pattern uh, with a simple royal seal, which repeats a couple of times. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. I think I have this texture around here. So I'm going to go and blend it here. And it's going to give us this nice, nice effect. So let's go ahead and do and render this one. I might go ahead and repeat this more just to get a more smooth look so I might go with uh, 2020 and it's gonna give us a more softer look all right so I'm gonna go ahead and text and uh, render this and be right back so here is our final shader uh, the royal velvet with uh, the gold pattern on top of it and as you can see uh, because of that we added that bump map uh, bump material at the end when we took the cloth blend uh, the V-Ray blend material and we hooked it up into the bump map this way we don't have to hook up the uh, bump material into each each shader in the uh, in all, each coat material and the base material this way the same uh, especially here we you want that bump map to affect the even the pattern that you print on top of the uh, of, of the cloth I really hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you liked it please share uh, follow us on Facebook uh, on Twitter and make sure you follow our website and hopefully next week I'm going to show you how to add some more magic to your shaders and how to take this shader uh, from V-Ray and achieve uh, this type of look uh, just to make it uh, more soft and have that uh, cinematic feel to it and just to get uh, more out of your renders. All right, see you next week.